I'm a big fan of the 1982 Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan the Barbarian film. In fact, it is my all-time favorite movie and ultimately created my love of the bare-chested, muscle-bound, behemoth warrior types, the take-no-shit vagabonds who roam the land getting into adventures for gold and women. Now, I know that the 1982 film isn't exactly accurate to the Conan character as written by Robert E. Howard, who I'm also a huge fan of, but as a standalone film, it is a masterwork of the sword and sorcery genre, and if you haven't seen it, you really should check it out. It's, it's amazing. D go watch it right now, seriously. And its effects on the box office didn't go unnoticed by the public at the time either, as blacklisted Italian writer Arista de Masacesi, God, I know I pronounced that wrong, uh, better known as Joe D'Amato, wanted to make his own Conan film. But this brings us to one of his more well-known efforts into completely stealing someone else's ideas, the Italian Conan the Barbarian, Ator the Invincible. And he wants to marry his sister. Ator starts off with some prophecy about a guy named Torin, who is not a bull man from Warcraft, but instead he's some failed revolutionary. He gets kinda sorta reborn as our main character, I don't know, it's not explained. But apparently we switch to Ten Commandments because there's a literal infanticide happening right now, trying to get Ator because of the prophecy. And he's rescued by this guy, Griba, who takes him from his mom before she gets axed. Dumbest soldier ever. Can't even tell a grown woman from a baby. Griba brings baby Ator to this one family for seemingly no reason and shirks off the responsibility of adoptive fatherhood for also reasons never explained. The movie jumps ahead several years to where Ator is an adult, but the edit that they went with literally does not explain that. Here's the actual cut they used. No fade to white or title card. We're just supposed to know that this is like 18, 20 years later and not something that happens like the very next day or a couple minutes later. Or maybe that soldier wasn't so dumb and people can go from baby to full grown adult in a few seconds in this universe. I don't know. Ator is played by B-movie legend Miles O'Keefe, whom famously had this joke made about him. How much Keefe is in this movie anyway? Miles O'Keefe. <laughs> now, Miles is actually pretty good in this movie. He's never been a guy who's gonna win Oscars since he only did movies for a quick payday, but hey, he's ripped, has charisma, and he takes the movie just seriously enough to turn in a solid performance. Like, the movie's still terrible, but it's always refreshing to see a good actor in a bad movie. And now we get to the reason you clicked on this video, and <laughs> this scene is so awkward that I would be doing it a disservice if I cut any of it down. So here's the scene where Ator asks to marry his sister. In full. I love you. And I love you. Why can't we marry? Ed, we are brother and sister. I'll talk with our father. No, I am not going to play a banjo sound effect because I hate banjos! Now fortunately for the audience and uh, people who are from Pornhub, we already know that Ator and his sister aren't biologically related since Ator was adopted, but take a look at this. You remember how our, our ancestors used to allow marriage between brother and sister? I know times have changed, but... Ator, you don't know how really happy you make me. Well, well, then you're saying you'd, you'd allow me to marry my sister? She is not your sister. Ator went his entire life having a hard-on for his sister, not knowing that they weren't related, and he was ready, willing, and able to turn his family tree into a family wreath, you know? So they have this impromptu wedding on the fly, Ator just looks mildly disappointed about this. Like, I think learning about his sister not actually being related to him kind of ruined everything. Like, y you think it was his fetish or something? Meanwhile, the evil big bad guys just kind of sort of see Griba just kind of chilling, and to get him, they decide to ransack the village, completely unsure if he had any relation to this village at all. But it's a staple of 1980s fantasy movies. You gotta have a scene somewhere where a village gets burned to the ground. It's just a rule. 
The formula is, you know, Conan did it, therefore we gotta do it. In the midst of the battle, Ator's sister wife gets kidnapped, I guess because she has a nice ass. Ator survives the genocide, and then Griba trains him to get revenge. Which brings me to the question, oh, why didn't he just raise him in the first place if he was just going to inevitably train him? I mean, what was his plan here? Hoping that the evil spider cult sees him just kind of hanging out so he could then train Ator when he could have... You know what? I'm thinking way too much into this. Training goes pretty well until Ator sees this hot blonde chick getting attacked. He rescues her, but right when he returns to Griba's cave, he's cleared out everything, leaving only his... <laughs> his cheap toy magic sword and some armor. Like, no joke, that sword has got to be the cheapest looking sword I've ever seen in a fantasy movie. It looks like it's made of plastic or some overly shiny aluminum or something. I don't know what they used to make this thing, but they really should have taken it back to the Dollar Tree and asked for something a little more realistic, like, I don't know, a cheap Halloween sword that you could probably get for a buck fifty. Sword looks dumb. Afterwards, Ator goes out hunting stock footage, apparently. I mean, this doesn't match at all. Why did they put this here? And then he gets kidnapped by Amazon women, where conveniently the blonde chick he saved wins him for the night in a fight. Normally, this would be pretty awesome, you know? Amazon chicks fighting over you for who gets you for the night? Ooh, nice, nice. And then, you know... Is yours for tonight. As the sun rises tomorrow, you will kill him. Now, this is horrible news for Ator, because as we all know, he only gets wood for his relatives. The death part was negotiable. Now, the Amazon is actually played by B-movie actress Sabrina Siani, who I've seen in a bunch of other movies. But I'll be honest, I almost didn't recognize her because she's usually nude in all of her roles. Blonde Amazon chick, I completely forgot her name, and Ator team up, sneak away, and then nothing of note happens except for the adorable bear companion, who I've neglected to mention the entire time, does cute stuff. This movie gets relatively confusing and convoluted because whenever Griba and Ator reunite, Griba reveals Ator's birthmark, then Ator gets kidnapped again, this time by a witch who has no point in the story at all except to create a huge plot hole about Ator's sister, and she's apparently close to the evil spider guy, or maybe she's brainwashed or something? I don't know, they don't explain it! There was a witch that had relations with Conan, I guess, and, you know, that was there, and this movie's gotta have it too, I suppose. Even if it makes absolutely no sense in context of anything! Ator gets saved by Sabrina's character again, and this time they seek out a magical mirror shield, which, when in a brightly lit room, causes Ator's shadow to come to life and tries to kill him. I guess this is the part where maybe the bootleg version of Conan he was watching accidentally got taped over by Bugs Bunny and he was just too high to notice. They cover the shield in a cloth because, you know, well, duh, of course that would work. Then they attack the spider cult guy, where this happens. <laughs> Why does the cult leader explode when the same shield turned Ator's shadow to life? This is yet another thing this movie never explains. Sabrina's character has served her purpose and dies, so sorry, no harem for Ator, which is fine because he still only wants his sister. You know, so, so say what you want about him, you know, he might be into incest, but at least he's monogamous. Oh, also, she's about to be eaten by a really bad animatronic spider. And Griba shows up again, uh, but apparently it's revealed that he's been evil the whole time, because, you guessed it, reasons never explained. Even though it completely contradicts his entire character up to this point. Ator easily defeats Griba, even though Griba should have years of experience over him and is the one who trained him earlier, but, you know, a student, master, whatever. And Griba gets stuck to the spider web, which is really confusing because his sister had to be tied to the dang thing. So a little consistency is all I'm asking for, you know? Which leads up to what might be the greatest final battle in fantasy film history. Ator faces off with the spider from earlier, who is just a really, really bad puppet with very visible strings. Oh, and even though the shield's reflection has been established as magical, it does nothing to the spider at all. Ator kills the spider, the shield shatters for no reason at all, then a volcano erupts somewhere, I guess. Ator and his stepsister wife run off in a completely different location. All is well in this ending, roll credits, my god, that was bad. <laughs> you know, this movie is so bad, it's actually kind of fun to watch in the right mindset, but 
you can never get away from the indisputable fact that it is a giant ripoff of Conan. Like, I mean, it's it's so close, I'm surprised the dude was never sued for plagiarism. You have the hero barbarian character who has his village destroyed, getting a magic sword from a cave, teaming up with a blonde thief woman who dies, trying to stop an evil cult dedicated to a venomous creature. Now, there are a few differences. For starters, Conan never tries to bang anyone he's related to. But the plot summary is pretty much beat for beat, and a few scenes are switched around, but it's like someone just went, hey, let's make a Conan movie, but change it just enough so we don't get sued for it. Even though we probably should be. So that's Ator the Invincible, an Italian Conan the Barbarian movie made on the budget of Pocket Lint and Hope, where the main character's entire motivation is to bang his sister. And you want to know the scary thing? There are three other movies. Yes, I've seen them. M maybe some other time.